Still to this day, the God Hand of the Berserk universe are some of the most enigmatic and intriguing characters in the entire story, and yet, in the grand scheme of things, they have barely had any screen time. But I think this is what helps to add not only the mysteries that they present in the story, but also the impact that their presence has when they actually do show up. Griffith aside, the other four members of the God Hand have really only been present a couple of times in the manga. At the ending of the Black Swordsman arc, when they are introduced for the first time, and then of course we have the Eclipse itself, which gives us the majority of their time in the manga. Slan also got some specific scenes, like when she was in the clip-off dimension and she manifested her body using the innards of slain troll guts. We've also seen Conrad and Slan briefly manifest themselves from time to time in the human world, using Rats of the Plague for Conrad and Fire of the Heretic Orgy that I sadly was not invited to for Slan. The God Hand was also symbolically manifested with a collection of restless souls during the Incarnation Ceremony, and during the merger of the physical and astral worlds, Mira dedicated one double-page spread to each of the God Hand members to represent them making their way towards the living world. And finally, Void was shown in the Skull Knight flashback, accompanied by four other characters that we don't have any context for, but most assume was a previous version of the God Hand with Void being the newest member in the flashback, and in present day, that would make him the oldest. Now you can absolutely call the God Hand antagonist, but they are not as deeply and emotionally linked to the story as Griffith himself. Of course, also a God Hand member now, he has without a doubt had the most amount of screen time coming back into the physical world, creating an army, and overtaking the world, giving humanity their only sanctuary away from the astral creatures that he, unknowingly to them, unleashed upon the world. But at this point in the story, it seems that Griffith slash Femto has been acting solo with no assistance from the other God Hand members. So the question remains, where are they? And when will they return? It's impossible to give an exact assumption as to when we will see the God Hand again, but we might be able to make some educated guesses based upon the evidence that we've seen so far. The first thing I want to mention is the astral merger with the physical world. It is debatable just how much of the astral world was unleashed onto the physical, because it was enough so that monsters of mankind's fears now walk the earth themselves. We have dragons, hydras, lots of silly trolls, but the God Hand themselves reside in the deepest depths of the astral world, just one layer above the abyss, an area where you lose all human consciousness and ego and become nothing more than a swirling mass of negative energy. Pain, anguish, and torment is all that is left of you. It has been called the berserk version of hell, and for good reason. It's my assumption that the Astral Merger did not extend this deeply, and that there are still aspects of the Astral World that have not overlapped with the physical, which means the God Hand are still not able to interact here. What I assume Miura's panels of the God Hand to be at the end of Volume 34, especially since they're so abstract, I mean, look at this shit. I don't think Ubik is just hanging out somewhere on Earth having his little tea party, but it'd be cool if he was. Instead, I take these pages to mean that the God Hand are on their way. It's an ominous foreshadowing that the world has begun to sink into the astral world, a look at an inevitability of the future. Like, we aren't there yet, but it's coming. I also don't believe the God Hand are yet in the physical world because everything with them so far, including Femto, implies that they need physical forms to exist in the physical world. There was an entire event called the Incarnation Ceremony that was specifically conceived in order to bring Griffith to the physical world and give him a physical body, to give him flesh and blood so that he can interact within this dimension. And it's open to interpretation as to if it was just the collective design desires of mankind that brought him into physical form, or if the egg of the perfect world needed to consume something physical for Griffith to merge into, but ironically he chose the demon child, which probably was not planned, but whatever you think needed to happen, the objective truth is that Griffith had to be given a physical form. Added to this idea is the God Hand manifestations that we have seen so far. Each and every time the God Hand has even briefly interacted somewhere other than their specific dimension, they needed something else to create their forms. 
Conrad was able to briefly manifest using rats of the plague. Slan was able to use fire, specifically fire that was used within a collective of humanity interacting in some depraved satanic behavior. Also, Slan creating herself out of the troll guts. It has been implied time and time again in the manga that the god hand can't just appear, but they need to be manifested, and to use something as their physical form. Either that, or, like during the eclipse, they merge an area of the physical world so deeply that they bring other people to their lair. Now if we look at the Skull Knight flashback, there's no dialogue, but we do see all five God Hand members together looming over the Skull Knight, and the entire area seems to be within their domain, even with the Abyss in the background. So there's been many discussions as to what exactly we're looking at here. Is this an eclipse? Is this the fall of Geyserk's kingdom? What stage of the plan is this? And I theorize that this is something similar to what we are heading towards in the story that we are reading. It's mentioned many times in Berserk that time is like a spiral. The same similar events play out over and over, but with minor differences that detour it just a bit to change it slightly every single time. What if this flashback is stage three? First, there's the eclipse, stage one, then the incarnation, stage two, and then total apocalypse, stage three. An apocalypse that collects all of humanity in one location. Here now we have Falconia, which is the only sanctuary for humanity on planet Earth that we're aware of. And in the past, we had Geyserk's kingdom, how he brought all of the nations together under one banner. And using that swelling of desire and negative energy all concentrated in one place, they are able to perform a ceremony similar to the first two that wipes out most of humanity, causing us to have to start over every thousand years. I don't know if any of this is true, but I feel like we are not going to see the God Hand again until this moment happens. I believe that we are going to get Guts' perspective of this same exact shot, but it won't be Void in the middle. It'll be Femto. And if the plan succeeds, then Femto would go on to be the first in the next collection of God Hand members. But there is also another factor to consider, and that is Griffith slash Femto himself. An ominous line of dialogue from Guts when he's questioned about what he thinks Griffith will do next is that he says Griffith is the hawk. He will soar higher if he can. The theory is that Griffith will betray the God Hand, not out of some heroic sense, but out of his own innate personality trait to constantly strive towards greater and greater heights of power. Free will has always been a question and a theme in Berserk, but we've seen, even with Apostle characters like the Count and Rosine, that still had attributes of their human selves that carried over after they became Apostles. If, as a human, Griffith is willing to betray the King and betray his own Band of the Hawk after embracing his inner darkness, what is to stop him from betraying the God Hand and fate itself for his own gain? Now, as to how this would happen, I, I don't know, but it is an interesting angle to go on and honestly might be better than just Griffith being a pawn in the God Hand's overall objectives. It might be more interesting for his own innate desires and dreams to still be his driving force no matter what and no matter what is looming over him or in the authority position, he'll find a way to rise above. In a recent chapter, Griffith mentions heading east. What this could mean is up in the air, but some people have theorized that it's God Hand related, and I'm unconvinced of that. However, if it is laying the groundwork for some inevitable conflict, I'd be all for it. So basically, in my opinion, I still don't think that we will see the God Hand again for a while. And story-wise, I think we will really only see them one more time. But when it happens, it will be the climax and final event of the entire story and their plan and everything that's been building up so far. I feel like it will be more intense than the Eclipse itself, maybe not in terms of our emotion towards the characters, but in the grandeur of it and in the devastation, absolutely. I believe that we will get this moment once again, but like the Spiral of Time, 
events will play out very differently than in Skull Knight's past. I don't boast to think I know how Berserk will end or anything like that, but I do think that this final event will be something that we will talk about for years and years to come after the story finally ends. So what about you guys? How and when do you think we will see the God Hand again? Will we see them individually or collective as a group? Do you think Griffith will betray the God Hand? Do you think the God Hand need physical forms to interact here? Or will they just bring the entire physical world to their dimension? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. It's a fun thing to theorize about. As of right now, I don't know when the next Berserk chapter is going to come out, but there's a lot of things up in the air and a lot of story threads happening, and I'm just wondering when we will see this beautiful face once again. Thanks for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Give the video a like and a comment if you liked it to help it in the algorithm. Also, if you want to support the channel on a deeper level, I do have a Patreon channel memberships turned on, linked down below, as well as a merch store and all the social media links where you can follow me. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time.